can't trust dog these niggas, bro. Like, I did this joke. I did this joke, and they put it on the internet by this, you know, put it up. And I basically said that one time I did cocaine and made out with this dude. And all my homies from back home, they saw the shit. And they were just like, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> what? It's like, what the fuck? Ever since you moved to L.A., you've been doing all this gay shit, talking all this gay shit, running all these gay ass shows. Nigga, what the fuck happened to you, Jack? I was like, I was on cocaine. <laughs> Like, nigga, I do cocaine all the time. I never made out with no dude before. Like, oh my God, you don't know how I do cocaine? <laughs> Homophobia has been ruining the cocaine experience for young men in this country. And nobody's fucking talking about it. You're supposed to go figure out who you are off the yak. You're supposed to do that boogie shit. You can't go find who you are as a man. You're supposed to go stand on top of a cop car, kiss a nigga. <laughs> Drive your ex's house and throw a microwave at her husband. It's supposed to be like when I made out with that dude, it was like the first time I tasted oysters. I was just like, not for me. <laughs> now I need to put some sriracha on this nigga's lips. <laughs> this ain't cooking like I needed to cook. <laughs> Every time I do this joke, every time I do this joke, there's always dudes in the crowd. They're like, ah, oh, it's funny. Well, I don't, you know, I don't need to kiss no dude. <laughs> I'm gay. I don't need to kiss no dude. Figure that shit. Alright, no, I'm straight. I don't need to kiss no motherfucking dude. Some of you guys are right, but some of you are wrong. <laughs> some of y'all sitting here, you wonder why you you fucking drive your car and do the dishes and mow your lawn and you look at that ceiling fan in your house and you just stare at it. You wonder why you feel incomplete, nigga. You're not depressed. You're gay. <laughs> So what you're gonna do is marry some dumb bitch and have some dumb bitch kids and you're gonna keep them at arm's length and you're never gonna understand the value of family and you're gonna blame them and put them in a whole treacherous wormhole where they'll never be able to understand themselves and you're gonna go on a trip to Belize and you're gonna separate yourself from that family and meet this dude with a shiny forehead and a soft chest. And he's gonna understand you. He's gonna invite you back to his villa and make you this rice dish and he's gonna whisper sweet nothing to you. And when you finally feel comfortable, he's gonna take the top of your head and push it to his dick. And you're gonna suck his dick, and guess what? You're gonna be bad at it. <laughs> and that's what pisses me off the most, man. You, you procrastinated your sexuality, and now you out here, motherfucking 40 years old, sucking dick like you 13, nigga. <laughs> Get your ass back in the closet out here, fucking around with the dick. We don't need that. Out here with a mortgage, sucking dick. <laughs> Like you ain't write your will. <laughs> just bored, bro. Niggas is not funny no more. This is not as, it's like homophobia is just like, we got it. They got it, bro. They silly. <laughs> like homophobia is just hack. They got it. They silly niggas. They weird. Ah. <laughs> they understand, bro. There's so many better groups of people to hate. Like, you ever been poolside with some Armenians? Some niggas is trash. <laughs> <laughs> we still act these gay niggas like they ain't, like gay men, the motherfuckers are strong. <laughs> gay men are swole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, niggas, Equinox, niggas. Just... <laughs> Buff as fuck, you know why? You know why gay men are so strong? Because they have to fuck a man, nigga. What? <laughs> Yeah, that, sounds, that sounds rigorous, nigga. <laughs> you fuck a grown ass man in his booty, he need a strong ass back and do a bunch of triangle push ups. To, <laughs> to fuck a woman in her ass, it's not that hard. You just gotta go listen to a couple of insecurities, give some Hennessy, and then better for you. <laughs> to fuck a grown man in his ass, <laughs> you gotta catch that nigga. Where you going, cuz? <laughs> Fuck up, Marcus. <laughs> Just cause we hoop together don't mean you ain't gonna get this dick, nigga. <laughs> now I know a lot of y'all like, that's not how gay sex works. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be gay last week, they're like, you gotta do 35 pull-ups. Like, I'm going back to bitches, nigga. <laughs> I'm literally too weak to come out the closet. The door is jammed. Like, y'all want me to fuck up out of here? Niggas, I can suck some dick. Everybody know Jack and I love sucking dick, nigga. <laughs> Everyone's just boring. Everyone's not funny. Everyone's fucking hat. It's just boring to me. It's not entertaining. Because it's just like, niggas who be yelling, 
don't take the time to understand why the old people be not be mad and not understanding. Like the LGBTQ community, like my only issue with them is like, you, you're be happy. Stop fucking trying to make them understand why you happy. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> they never will. They're old. And you've already cultivated this community and this culture that's been building over decades and decades and decades. And now they're just jumping right into it because it's become pop culture. And you're mad at them for not understanding it. And that's insane. That's truly fucking insane. That's like being mad at a nigga for coming seven hours late into a game of Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're not gonna, there's like, okay, can I put my shit here? No, you owe us $5,000. <laughs> 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 I don't wanna play the game no more. <laughs> now you has bro a phobic and you gotta figure your shit out. <laughs> Like most of us in here are young as fuck, so we grew up with the shit. We know the shit better than everybody else. And so just like understand that, you know, old people gotta die. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're gonna die and they're nothing. So stop yelling at them like they aren't gonna die. <laughs> like I grew up in Seattle, I grew up in all this shit. I had like five, six kids transition in my middle school. It was insane. It wasn't insane, it was just like something I grew up with it. It got to the point where I got bored of it. Like this, like this one girl came in, she just transitioned from a boy to a girl, she watched it, she's like, hey y'all, I'm a girl now, we're like, okay, bitch. <laughs> she's like, you guys don't want to hear about my journey? I'm like, bitch, I'm trying to learn how to read. <laughs> I'm trying to learn about the journey of the bitch to Terabithia. If you don't leave me, the fuck <laughs> Like one day we had to do this project where we all came to school as our favorite characters from Disney Channel, Disney movies. And I told everybody in the class I was coming to Simba. Everybody in the class knew I was coming at Simba. <laughs> Just saying. I told everybody, went home, made a main, my mom stayed up, put the makeup on, the whiskers, the tail, the whole fucking fur shit. I went all out for that shit. I was like, I'm about to get the highest grade in the class. I don't give a fuck what no one said. Showed up early as fuck, woke up early as fuck, came first to class, everyone walked in the class like, wow, Jack, you got the best goddamn costume in the class. You about to get the highest grade for this shit. I was like, round, round. <laughs> in character, not breaking character. <laughs> The young lady I just told you about, she came into class, but she was also dressed as Simba, but she had a whole bunch of sparkles on her face and a tutu on to symbolize that Simba shouldn't have a gender and everybody should be able to be their favorite character void of gender. And I was like, you gonna do this shit today? <laughs> She was in the South. Like, she's from the South, South. So she don't understand none of this shit. I sit in the car, my grandma, like, why that little, why that little boy over there dressed like a, you know, <laughs> sorry. She's, you know, she used to play dominoes against Jim Crow. That's how. <laughs> so she don't understand what's going on. So she's like, what's wrong with that little boy? Why are you over there dressed like, you know, why are you over there dressed like a girl lying? He a boy. Why are you over there being weird? He a little weird little boy dressed like a girl lying. He weird. What's wrong with him? He weird, baby. What's wrong with him? And the first one, I'm like, she is a bitch. <laughs> That's the proper pronoun. Nigga and bitch don't act up in the world. <laughs> We just gotta, you gotta stop getting mad at old people, bro. They gonna believe what they believe and they, that's what it is, man. Stop ruining your happiness off them niggas being uneducated. That's fucking, you look stupid. <laughs> Don't clap. <laughs> <laughs> you look fucking dumb as shit. Hey, what did Chappelle and Burr say that? They're 50, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are they supposed to say? 50 year old shit. <laughs> Like, I don't know, like, I remember I made out, <laughs> I remember I made out with this trans girl, and, and I liked it. And here's my thing, if, if you're gonna figure out your sexuality, understand your transgression through your sexuality, don't go tell white people first, because they're just gonna accept you because of slavery. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so what you need to do is run and buy brown and black people first. You gotta earn it, in my heart. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wanna go tell my mom first, like, hey mom, I made out with this transgender girl. I think I like it. I think I'm pansexual. She's like, what that mean? You like them Asians? <laughs> <laughs> Told you to stop watching all that Dragon Z ball. Now look at your boy. <laughs> all them damn Pilipinos sitting on your face. Go to the room, right? <laughs> Then I went to go tell my homies, niggas I grew up with since I was like, you know, first grade, all that shit. Just niggas, you know, they a little intolerant. I got nervous. My boys, these niggas I gotta know for the rest of my life. They'll probably be my wedding shit. I was like, hey. 
I met out with this transgender girl. I think I'm pansexual. Like, that makes sense. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like, nigga, you weird. You want the weird niggas that do weird nigga shit. <laughs> Like, what the fuck are you talking about here? You don't remember Sierra? I don't know if you guys know. There's, you guys don't know the same <laughs> She made my goodies. She made one, two steps. She didn't marry one, two steps. was with Future for a while. But in the early 2000s, we all thought that she was an hermaphrodite because of whatever the fuck happened on the episode of 106 and Park. <laughs> <laughs> this was all during the time when she was dating Bow Wow. So the whole country was like, wow, Bow Wow's progressive. <laughs> And so I didn't know that news. Before Twitter, you didn't know the news until somebody told you why you were playing basketball. Like, that's, that's the same way I found out 9-11. I was just checking up with him, and he was like, 9-11? I was like, did we keep playing? <laughs> <laughs> and so I was playing four square, you know, I was playing ball. And my homie Darius came up behind me, and he tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, yo, you hear about Sierra? I'm like, fine ass, my goodness, Sierra. Nigga, she's bad as fuck. For sure, I'm like, yo, she's a hermaphrodite, bro. She got a dick and a pussy. I was like, okay. <laughs> fucking gross, you need some weird shit. Like, nigga, that's year. I'll lift that dick up and suck that pussy out. <laughs> like an oyster, bro. <laughs> I'll put that dick on the top of my head like I'm fixing the car. And it <laughs> chair on time for your appointment, and your barber puts the cape over your chest, and then he eats his food for 45 minutes. <laughs> well, another barber tells you how he can beat up Mike Tyson. <laughs> so, you know, I walk in, do the shit, put his blank on, you know, I, these people I've been going to for a long time, so you hit me inside, he's like, yo, Jack, what you do this weekend? I'm like, oh, I'm North Carolina, doing some shows, ate some catfish, man, I was this transgender girl. He's like, what? <laughs> no, I was out in North Carolina doing some shows, ate some catfish. She's like, what's the last thing you said? I was like, oh, I ate some catfish. She's like, no, what's the last, last thing you said? I was like, oh, man, I was just changing the girl. The whole barbershop shut down. They unplugged the music. They ripped the TV off. <laughs> <laughs> like, Damn, we could take Tyson. That's crazy as fuck. <laughs> A dude across the street, he didn't even hear what I said. He just started running towards the barbershop. <laughs> Talking shit, we were talking shit, she was funny as fuck, she was cute as fuck. We go in the alley, we start making out, we're having a good time, you know, living our life. And she's like, You wanna go back to your, your hotel? I'm like, hell yeah. We start, you know, holding hands, walking back to the hotel. She had she had big hands. <laughs> <laughs> we holding hands, walking back to the hotel. She's casing the joint. Just getting real sketch the closer and closer we get to the hotel. As soon as we get in the, in the hotel lobby, she's just looking around. I'm like, okay. We get in the elevator, she's tapping her thigh, tapping her foot. I'm like, all right, we get to the room and she beeline straight for the bathroom. I'm like, fuck, she about to set me up to get robbed. <laughs> this is how my brain works. She about to set me up to get robbed. She about to call all her niggas. They about to kick down this door and rob me for all my shit. This is what I'm gonna do. So this is what I did. I took all my, I took my wallet out. Took all the credit cards, the debit cards out my wallet. Dumped out my suitcase. Took everything out of there and just hid it around the room. <laughs> that way, when they kick down the door, they gotta go on the scavenger hunt. <laughs> they gotta be tied up in the corner talking about warmer. <laughs> Colder. Warmer. There's my Foot Locker rewards card. <laughs> Hiding everything around the room, the girl came out the room and she was crying. She had like, tears in her eyes. I'm like, What's wrong with you? She's like, I got something to tell you. I'm like, But to rob me, huh, bitch? <laughs> She's like, No, I just want to let you know that I'm trans. And I want to tell you that before you pull your dick out because people usually get really mad at me when they find something out like that with, with their dick out. I was like, Phew, thank God. <laughs> she was like, What? I was like, I would way rather find out someone's trans with my dick out than get robbed with my dick out. <laughs> yeah, they kicked out the door, steal my passport, steal my ID. I gotta go to the. Nah, nigga, I would way rather figure out my sexuality than go away as a lion to DMV. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk to no government worker. I'm about to sit here and suck this lady's dick. <laughs> so 
at this point, all the barbers are saying crisscross applesauce in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> One of the barbers goes, so then what happened? <laughs> I'm like, I kept kissing her. She's a good kisser. I don't tell you. He's like, ah, oh, nigga weird. Okay, nigga weird. Yeah. nigga weird. So then what happened? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, did you fuck her or not, dog? You know, this barbershop, I have to go there every two weeks. I know these people. I grow up with these people. And I have to go there. And I don't want to have to deal with whatever the fuck that is. And so, you know, I try to keep whatever the fuck I'm doing to myself. And so I sat there. I was like, Nah, nigga, she got a dick, that's gay. And the whole barbershop was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and this is not me saying that black men are homophobic or transphobic. This is just me saying that they are when they cut hair. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest part, the funniest part of the whole shit was when I was getting ready to leave, there was one barber who was just like, man, I bet you, you know, I bet you got a dick sucked though. I bet you just got a dick sucked though. And I left the barbershop as he was saying that, like Bill Cosby going to court, and I was just like, Nigga, <laughs> 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 mouth to mouth. <laughs> that is good. All the time. <laughs> I love white people. They gotta have instruments and stupid shit, but they are. <laughs> Be funny, nigga. You're just un untalented. You went to college just be untalented? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so glad all comedy died. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's just, you know, I'm fucking happy. It's okay. <laughs> Got a girl. She's perfect. Aww. Stupid bitch. <laughs> Make it be complete. I'll kill that hoe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so they like we're past the whole new shit, and so we're just fully just in the relationship, growing, becoming better, and shit. And I meditate and hold rocks or whatever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, remember the beginning of your relationship where it's kind of annoying. Where, you know, you trying, you know, you trying to get to know each other. You trying to fully figure out your sexual chemistry and shit. You know, when you first dating a girl for the first time, they want to be like pristine and clean when it comes to spontaneous sex. So like we come, you know, I'll be getting out of the writer's room, she'll be getting done with her shit, we sit on the couch and just watching movies and Netflix and shit. And we sit down, I'm like, baby, baby, let me, you know, let me just eat your pussy right quick. Let me eat your pussy right quick, right fast. <laughs> <laughs> you just get up in there, come on, let's eat your pussy right quick, gumbo, baby, what you doing? <laughs> She's like, no, no, I'm gonna go clean off first. I'm just gonna wash off. I need to go just gonna wash off first. And I'm like, no, let me get it as it is. Let me, you know, let me eat your pussy with my Air Maxes on. Come on. Dive up in there. I was like, no, I wanna go clean off first. I've been running around. Let me just go clean off. I'm like, baby, listen, I'm trying to taste your day. <laughs> Traffic was. <laughs> I'm trying to taste why Diane got the promotion over you. <laughs> this day, she don't tell good stories, but that pussy boy, that, that pussy boy, plain. <laughs> <laughs> the A story, the, the B story, the C story that wraps it all up. There's a Marvel Cinematic Universe in my girl's cooch. I'm trying to dive on in and meet Thanos. They can leave me alone. <laughs> You'll be eating pussy and a bitch squirting your face and you feel like you won a Nickelodeon award. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, I got slime, this is crazy. <laughs> I remember when Nick Cannon got slime, this is wild as hell. <laughs> this is my favorite joke. <laughs> like, I just learned young. I just learned how to eat pussy very, very young. <laughs> My uncle taught me. <laughs> True story. Sixth grade, fifth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, I forgot what it was, but he used to pick me up every single day on Thursday, drop me down to this place called Joe's Crab Shack. Order. <laughs> <laughs> he would order a bucket of crab legs, and he would take all the, the legs off and rip them and throw them aside and take the heart of crab. I don't know crab, but it was a heart of a crab. He would bust it open, and he made me hold my arms behind my back and eat the crab out with just my face. I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> and that nigga would just stand behind me like, go! <laughs> 60 seconds, I'm like, <laughs> 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 Stop! <laughs> he would 
would take the shit out of the crab and he would look at it and he would look me dead in my motherfucking 11 year old eyes and be like, if there's any meat left on this, that means that bitch gonna cheat on you. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, boy, <laughs> bitch be leaving my house looking like Bambi, nigga. Just... <laughs> She lying, she fucked that nigga. to a fault. 
It's very fair, but it's just, I don't know. I'm going to tell you. I've just seen too many niggas get scorned, <laughs> so I'm just like, I don't believe it. Like, I was watching Mindhunters. I was watching Mindhunters, and I fucking love that show yeah. so much. It's my favorite fucking show, like, in the past five, ten years. And every time I watch it, it's always, they're portraying all these white criminals as, like, geniuses. They're all these genius white criminals. And, like, the one white serial, the one black serial killer that you, hey, hey, my name is Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> I do like killing white people. Do I, I do like killing white people. I like it to do that. <laughs> the mind hunter people were just like, that nigga too retarded. He just, uh, <laughs> he just got lucky killing the same type of people. This has nothing to do with our investigation. And all the white people like, I did it because I'm prestigious. <laughs> like, nah, that's, that's stupid. Because our black criminals are just as smart and just as brilliant and doing it for an incentive that the same white criminals are doing it for. Charlie Manson is just as fucking brilliant as Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not one of those, I like, I get it. I think Michael Jackson did it, but not for because he's a monster pedophile. I think Michael, you gotta remember, <laughs> you gotta remember, most of the kids that Michael Jackson was messing with that were little boys were young white boys. You know what I mean? He better have been on some real militant civil rights shit. <laughs> we just didn't ask him. We always ask white criminals, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? But Michael Jackson just sitting there like, I got an idea. <laughs> he was very pro-black his entire career. He's the same guy who bought all the rights to the Beatles music. Married Elvis Presley's daughter. Man, they don't really care about us. Was that every black event was hood nigga after this, hood nigga after that. And even Michael Jackson, who was the most famous person to ever probably exist, blew past the color barrier to read a skyscraper that we'll never be able to understand or fathom and see white supremacy for what it is up high that we don't even know what the fuck he saw. We don't even know what the fuck he saw. So what he did see was... White male privilege was so sky high that the only way we can stop these niggas is just get them when they're young. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson was a socialist. And what he wanted to do, he wanted to bring emotional equality to this country, and you guys didn't let him. He knew what it was. He knew that. <laughs> <laughs> a privileged, molested white man has the same level of confidence as a Korean woman. And so what he wanted, <laughs> he wanted to put these little boys into equality. And y'all niggas didn't let him. And that's dumb. <laughs> that's fucking stupid. You, and everyone, y'all uh, 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 act like the math don't add up. You think Dick Cheney would have invaded Iraq if Michael Jackson got to him as a boy? <laughs> no. Michael Jackson was trying to fuck the AR-15s out of these niggas' hands. <laughs> How the fuck are you gonna shoot up a Walmart when your hand is all jittery? Then well, what did he do what he did to me? <laughs> attacking our women and killing our children. Anyone have any ideas? Michael Jackson in the babushka, he's trying to stay hidden. He's like, I have an idea. <laughs> they were like, oh shit, that's Michael Jackson with that big ass monkey nose and the babushka on What's up, bro? What you think? I think we should take their boys' booties. I've already started. What? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this nigga, though? Mike is tripping, bro. What the fuck is up with bro? Mike, they're gonna catch you. You're gonna go to jail. What are you gonna do when they catch you for fucking all these little white boys? I'm gonna change colors. 